Hey, what's up? Welcome to United Online. My name is Lucas. It is the most wonderful time of the year, and we are in a brand new message series called Hope is Here. Enjoy today's message. How's everyone doing? Good? Yes? All right. Hey, it's so good to um, be with you all. Didn't Cam do awesome last week? Come on, can we just give some love to Cam? Show him some love. Man, I, I love that guy. And uh, I am so thankful. Um, I'm so thankful for him and really thankful for all the leaders um, that, that serve here. Uh, at United. So can we just honor our leaders very quickly? Come on, can we just put our hands together? All of our leaders, they serve so well. They love y'all like crazy. And uh, here's the truth. I could not do this without them. And so I'm just so thankful for them. And then uh, worship tonight, wasn't, wasn't worship great? Can we just give it up for Hadessa leading us uh, so well in worship? The worship team, and uh, I, I love that. I was, um, uh, I was thinking, you know, my sister Nettie was up there. But other than Nettie, it was, it was three students that were leading us um, in worship. So I thought that was just, uh, that was incredible. So um, I just love that. I love that. You know, I got to tell you, I love this youth church. Um, it is, I may be biased. I may be biased. But it is, in my opinion, the best group of young people in the nation, Ayana. In the nation. Not the region. Okay, not Northeast Ohio, what's the best of All right, in the nation. All right, all right. So give it up for yourselves, everybody. Go ahead. Andrew, uh, Alan, are we recording? Tokalala recording? Good job. All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, tonight, hey, we're going to kick off a new series called Hope is Here. The Savior has come. Um, what happens, we like to say that this is the most wonderful time of the year, right? Um, but what happens is uh, we can, if we're not careful, get distracted by all the things that happen in this season that don't have to do with Christ. And so in this series, we want to focus in and remember what it is all about. I know it may be cliche, but it is true that Jesus, say it if you know it, is the reason for the season, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this idea that Jesus, the Savior, has, has come, you know? Um, that song that was uh, in this video that born is the king of Israel, that he has come, and he has come not to just uh, be a king, but he has come to be a savior of the world, and not just Israel, but of all of humanity and all that put their faith in Jesus. And so I want to read to you a, a, a very uh, popular Christmas verse, but it's in the Gospel of Luke. It's in chapter 2. I think it's really powerful and um just, just listen to what the Bible says. Uh, it, it talks about how um, uh, Mary and Joseph had to go back to Israel because there was a census being taken place. And you know the story that while they were traveling, Mary, who was pregnant, uh, had to give birth to Jesus. They gave birth to Jesus at the inn, because, uh, at, the, at the stable because there was no room for him in the end. So Jesus is born. He is, they, 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 the Bible says that he was wrapped in swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. Jesus, the Savior of the world, born, shows up on the scene. And if I was God, don't you think, like if you wanted the whole world to know that the Savior of the world has finally been born, don't you think that you would tell some people of like prominence, 
that would tell some other people of influence and it would trickle down that way. Don't you think if you were going to create a, an advertising or a marketing campaign that the Savior of the world is finally born, you're going to try and tell the right people. You know, like um, on, 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 on social media, what they want is they want the right people to push the right products. And so you'll find people who are quote unquote influencers who will push certain products. But don't you think if you were God and you wanted to let everybody know that the Savior of the world is here, you wanted to find the right kind of influencer to get this announcement out to. But I find it so interesting about God that he does not pick who we normally would pick to get the greatest message in the world out that the Savior has come. Here's what the Bible says. The night that the shepherds were in their fields, God, like they're just they're just watching their sheep. Like, could you imagine? They, they have no idea. You know, it's like a normal Wednesday night. They're just guarding their sheep. And then suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared. And the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded the shepherds. And now, now they're like terrified. Wouldn't, wouldn't you be terrified? Like, you're just there. You're watching the sheep. And like one sheep is like smelling another sheep's butt, and another sheep is like off by itself, and you're like counting them for fun. And then bam, all of a sudden, you know, the angel is there, and you're like, oh God, we're going bad to die. So they're terrified. The Bible says, the angel says to them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news. Say good news. I will bring great joy. Say great joy. To all of the people, right? He brings good news, and the good news brings the Savior has come. That is good news. And if you receive this good news that the Savior has come, it will bring great joy in your life. No matter what you're going through or no matter what you're dealing with, if you have Jesus, if you can focus in and realize that no matter what I'm going through, God has forgiven me of my sins. My name is written in his book. Heaven is my home. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. My sins are forgiven. That is good news, and that good news will produce in your life great joy. Even if things are difficult for you, you can still have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord can be your strength because you have received the good news. You see it? Then he goes on to say that the Savior, then he says like this, Yes, the Messiah, you know, the one you've been looking for. The Lord has been born today in Bethlehem in the city of David. And you will recognize the Messiah. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And then suddenly the angel is joined by a host of others. The armies of heaven praising God, saying glory to God in the highest heaven. And peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Peace has come to humanity because the Savior is born. Now, think about this. Just, just think about it for a minute. Because when you read the Bible, you can't just read the Bible. you got to read the Bible. You got to get into the page. You know, I always like to say it like this. You don't actually read the Bible. When you read the Bible, the Bible reads you. Right? And so these guys, listen to it. He says, the, the Savior. And then he clarifies, like, the Lord, the Messiah. He's come. The one we've been waiting for. And they're like, oh, snap. What's he look like? He is an eight-pound Six ounce infant baby Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying. You know, listen to me, listen. Then the people of Israel were under the oppression of Rome. 
Rome's Caesars were called sons of God. So Israel wants their Messiah to come to free them from the oppression of being a, 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 a slave nation under the, the captivity of Rome. They're waiting for their Messiah to come to overthrow Caesar so that they can have their own nation and live in freedom again. And the way they're expecting their Savior to show up is this militant, godlike king. And the way he shows up is the most humble way he could come as an infant baby on a hillside in Bethlehem. No room in the inn, lying in a manger, wrapped up with whatever clothes they could find. Like if the king was going to come. If the Savior of the world was going to come, wouldn't God, wouldn't you think he would find the right influencers? And wouldn't you think it would be all over CNN and all over Fox and all over MSNBC and all over Telemundo, right? And all over social media. But no, he decides, you know who I'm going to tell? Be like, Gabriel, listen to this idea. I just got this crazy idea. I'm going to tell you shepherds over here. And Gabriel's like, bro, the, the shepherds, the shepherds, they don't know anybody. They just know some other shepherd. They stink. Nobody wants to be a shepherd. He's like, exactly. They're not even going to believe him. It's going to be incredible. <laughs> right? Like if you were God and you wanted everybody to know that the Messiah had come, why would you pick a cold night in Bethlehem and have the, the Savior of the world born in a manger? Nobody knows that the only people you tell is some shepherds. And then to solidify the message, the one angel shows up and he's like, hey, I got good news of great joy for all of the people. The Lord, the Savior, the Messiah has born. You'll recognize him as this little eight pounds, six ounce infant baby Jesus lying in a manger wrapped in swaddling cloth, right? And then to solidify the message, the angel's just standing there and then he's like, blah! Then all the angels, just all of them, all the angels in heaven, they just show up behind them. They're like, this message is the truth. You know what I'm saying? It's the, it's the shepherds, they're on the hill, it's just one angel, it's the angel, they're telling them, they're looking at each other, they're like, can we believe this angel? I don't know. Why would the, the Lord come to us? We're shepherds. And so they're like having this dialogue, they're listening to the angel, they're scared. They're like, I'll fight him if you fight him. You know what I'm saying? Like, And then bam, all of heaven's armies show up. You know what I'm saying? Joy to the world. That, that message? The whole, the whole lot of them. You see it? It's amazing. It's amazing that God would come not the way the world wanted him to come, but as a humble servant. In a manger, and nobody knew. Right? Nobody knew. I think it's just so interesting because some people want God. If you were an Israelite living in that day and you wanted the Messiah to come, you wanted him to come a certain way. You wanted a militant king that could overthrow Rome and reestablish the nation of Israel. That's what you wanted. And some people, we do this today. Some people want God to be for them what they want God to be and not who He is. He is the Lord. He is Savior. He is the only one that can restore and forgive you of your sins and restore you to right relationship in the sight of God. He is the only one 
though our sins were scarlet, can wash us white as snow. He is the only one that can cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. Write our names in his book. Give us heaven as our, uh, as our future home as if we were already there. He's the only one that paid for our sins. And yet the world sometimes wants to reject God because they, he is not who they want him to be. The same way the nation of Israel was looking for this militant king, we sometimes look for God to be for us. This genie kind of got in the bottle and just, I'm going to rub the lamp. And God, give me what I want. My three wishes, this is what I need. You see it? And in the same way people wanted God to be, to fit in their box, God shattered their box. The Savior came on the scene. And nobody knew. The same way today in this Christmas season, I am here to remind you that the Savior has come. Right? And here's what he brought. He brought with him peace. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. He brought peace. What, what do I mean by peace? He brought peace. Between God and humanity. Why could we worship tonight? We can worship tonight because we have peace with God through His Son. Right, Louise? Romans chapter 5 verse 1. That we were enemies, we were hostile towards God. But Jesus... Paid the penalty for our sins. He restored the breach. He made us right in God's sight. That's what he has done. He restored peace. Peace came. And with it, he brought hope. And hope is not just this thing that we hold on to. It's tangible. And his name is Jesus. The angels show up announcing that peace has come. And announcing that what you've been hoping for, you've been hoping for a Messiah, that hope actually has a name, and his name is Jesus. Look at this. So the Word became human and made his home among us. Who's the Word here? Y'all know? Pop quiz. There you go, there you go, there you go. The Word became human and made his home among us. And he was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. So Jesus came, hope came, right? Stepped out of eternity, wrapped himself in humanity, and came to the world. Here's what the Bible says. He came to the world he created, but the world did not recognize him. He came to his own people, and they rejected him. But to all who believe and accept him, he gave them the right to become the children of God. They are reborn. Not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God, that comes from the Spirit. When we believe in Jesus. Jesus, the Word made flesh. Hope that has a name. Peace that came to restore right relationship between us and God. He came to us, and the ones he came to rejected him because he didn't look like what they thought he should look like. And today, in this Christmas Advent season, let's not be that kind of people that reject God because he doesn't fit into what we think he should look like. He wrapped himself in humanity. And gave himself as the greatest gift. So this Christmas, and all of the hustle, and all of the bustle, don't forget what this season is all about. It is about Jesus. Amen?